John Adams A Founding Father's Journey to the Presidency Introduction John Adams, the second president of the United States, played a pivotal role in shaping the young nation during its formative years. A founding father, a brilliant lawyer, a devoted family man, and a statesman of unwavering principles, Adams left an indelible mark on American history. This story traces the life and career of John Adams, from his early years in Massachusetts to his presidency and beyond, exploring the challenges, triumphs, and enduring legacy of this remarkable statesman. Chapter 1 Early Life and Education John Adams was born on October 30, 1735, in Braintree, Massachusetts, a small farming community about 10 miles south of Boston. His father, John Adams Sr., was a farmer and shoemaker, while his mother, Susanna Boylston Adams, hailed from a respected family. Young John grew up in a modest but intellectually stimulating environment. From an early age, John showed great promise as a scholar. He attended a local dame school and later received private tutoring from a local minister, John Marsh, who recognized his exceptional intellect. In 1751, at the age of 16, Adams entered Harvard College, where he immersed himself in classical studies, literature, and the intellectual currents of the Enlightenment. Adams graduated from Harvard in 1755 and embarked on a career in law, following in the footsteps of his father and grandfather. He began studying law under the guidance of James Putnam, a prominent lawyer in Worcester. Adams' legal training laid the foundation for his future role in shaping American jurisprudence and politics. Chapter 2 Marriage and Family Life While studying law in Worcester, Adams met Abigail Smith, the daughter of a congregational minister, and the two fell deeply in love. They married on October 25, 1764, and their union would prove to be one of the most enduring and intellectually stimulating partnerships in American history. Over the course of their marriage, John and Abigail Adams exchanged hundreds of letters that provide a remarkable insight into their thoughts, their relationship, and the tumultuous times in which they lived. Abigail's intellect and unwavering support for her husband would prove invaluable throughout his career. The Adamses had five children, Abigail Nabby, John Quincy, Susanna, Charles, and Thomas. John Quincy Adams, their second son, would later become the sixth president of the United States, marking the first father-son presidential succession in American history. Chapter 3 The Road to Revolution By the 1760s, tensions between the American colonies and the British crown were escalating. The passage of the Stamp Act in 1765 and the Townsend Acts in 1767 led to widespread protests and resistance among the colonists. John Adams emerged as a vocal critic of British policies and a defender of colonial rights. In 1770, the Boston Massacre unfolded in the streets of Boston, where British soldiers opened fire on a mob, killing five colonists. Adams was called upon to defend the British soldiers in court, a decision he took to uphold the principle of a fair trial, despite his personal sympathies for the American cause. Adams' commitment to justice and the rule of law marked a defining moment in his career, showcasing his dedication to principles over personal sentiment. His successful defense of the British soldiers earned him recognition and respect among his peers. Chapter 4 The Continental Congress As the American Revolution gained momentum, Adams emerged as a leading voice in the movement for independence. In 1774, he was elected as a delegate to the First Continental Congress in Philadelphia, where he joined other prominent figures such as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Benjamin Franklin. During his time in the Continental Congress, Adams played a pivotal role in advocating for independence and helped draft the Declaration of Rights and Grievances. His impassioned speeches and eloquent writing contributed to the growing sentiment that America should break away from British rule. In 1776, Adams seconded Richard Henry Lee's resolution for independence, which led to the drafting and adoption of the Declaration of Independence on July 4, 1776. While Thomas Jefferson is often credited with writing the document, 
Adam's support and advocacy were instrumental in securing its passage. Chapter 5 Diplomacy in Europe In 1777, John Adams was appointed as a diplomat to France, joining Benjamin Franklin and Arthur Lee as part of the American delegation. His mission was to secure French support for the American cause and negotiate a treaty of alliance and commerce. Adams faced numerous challenges in his diplomatic efforts. The French court, although sympathetic to the American cause, was hesitant to openly support the rebellion against Britain. Adams worked tirelessly to build relationships with key French officials, including King Louis XVI and Foreign Minister Charles Gravier, Comte de Vergennes. After a series of negotiations and setbacks, Adams achieved a significant diplomatic breakthrough in 1778 when France formally recognized the United States and signed the Treaty of Alliance and the Treaty of Amity and Commerce. These treaties provided crucial military and financial support to the American cause and helped turn the tide of the war in favor of the Patriots. Chapter 6 Diplomatic Challenges and Achievements Adams' diplomatic service did not end with his mission to France. In 1779, he was sent to the Netherlands to secure Dutch support for the American cause. The Dutch Republic, a trading nation with its own interests in challenging British hegemony, proved receptive to Adams' overtures. Through skillful negotiation, Adams secured loans from Dutch bankers and negotiated a treaty of amity and commerce with the Netherlands. This diplomatic success provided the United States with vital financial support and further isolated Britain in its war against the American colonies. In 1780, Adams was appointed as the American minister to Great Britain. His mission was to negotiate a peace treaty with Britain and secure recognition of American independence. However, the peace talks were protracted, and Adams faced considerable challenges including British reluctance to acknowledge American sovereignty. Chapter 7, The Treaty of Paris The negotiations for the Treaty of Paris, which would formally end the American Revolutionary War, were complex and contentious. John Adams, along with Benjamin Franklin, John Jay, and Henry Lawrence, represented the United States in these talks, while Britain was represented by a team led by Richard Oswald. Adams advocated for American interests with unwavering determination. One of the key issues in the negotiations was the northern and western boundaries of the United States. Adams successfully negotiated for a generous interpretation of these boundaries, which included present-day Maine, Vermont, and parts of the Midwest. On September 3, 1783, the Treaty of Paris was signed, officially recognizing the independence of the United States. The treaty also established the boundaries of the new nation, secured fishing rights off the coast of Newfoundland, and ensured the repayment of debts owed to British creditors. Chapter 8 Return to America and Political Life After the successful conclusion of the Treaty of Paris, John Adams returned to America in 1788. He received a hero's welcome and was hailed as a patriot who had played a pivotal role in securing American independence. Adams' reputation as a diplomat and statesman was at its peak. Upon his return, Adams resumed his political career in Massachusetts. He served as the vice president of Massachusetts from 1789 to 1794 and became deeply involved in state politics. During this time, he helped draft the Massachusetts Constitution, which became a model for other state constitutions and influenced the drafting of the U.S. Constitution. Chapter 9, The Constitutional Convention In 1787, a constitutional convention was convened in Philadelphia to address the shortcomings of the Articles of Confederation and draft a new constitution for the United States. John Adams was not in attendance at the convention, as he was serving as the American ambassador to Great Britain at the time. However, his ideas and writings on government and republicanism had a profound influence on the delegates. Many of the principles that Adams had championed, such as the separation of powers, checks and balances, and the importance of a strong executive, found their way into the U.S. Constitution. Adams corresponded extensively with many of the delegates, including Thomas Jefferson, who was also abroad during the convention. 
Chapter 10, The Presidency of John Adams In 1797, John Adams was elected as the second president of the United States. His presidency was marked by significant challenges and controversies, as he grappled with the fallout from the XYZ affair, a diplomatic crisis with France that nearly led to war. The XYZ affair involved French diplomats demanding bribes from American envoys in exchange for negotiations. Adams, in a move that demonstrated his commitment to principle and national honor, refused to pay the bribes and instead made the affair public, leading to widespread outrage and a millions for defense, but not one cent for tribute sentiment among Americans. While war was averted, tensions with France remained high during Adams' presidency. He signed the Alien and Sedition Acts, a series of laws aimed at curbing dissent and limiting the influence of French immigrants in American politics. These acts were controversial and deeply divisive, leading to criticism from Jeffersonian Republicans and concerns about the erosion of civil liberties. Chapter 11, The Election of 1800 The election of 1800, often referred to as the Revolution of 1800, was a bitterly contested and historic event in American politics. John Adams ran for re-election as the Federalist candidate, while Thomas Jefferson, his former friend and collaborator, ran as the Democratic-Republican candidate. The election highlighted the deep political divisions in the young nation, with Adams representing a strong federal government and Jefferson advocating for limited government and states' rights. The campaign was marked by intense partisan rhetoric, newspaper attacks, and bitter personal disputes. In the end, Thomas Jefferson emerged as the victor, winning the presidency in a peaceful transition of power that reaffirmed the stability of American democracy. Adams, in a gesture of patriotism and statesmanship, peacefully relinquished power to his political rival, setting a precedent for future presidential transitions. Chapter 12, Retirement and Legacy Following his defeat in the election of 1800, John Adams retired from politics and returned to his farm in Quincy, Massachusetts. He spent his remaining years reading, writing, and reflecting on his life and the future of the United States. One of Adams' most significant contributions to American governance during his retirement was his correspondence with Thomas Jefferson. The two former friends, who had become estranged during their respective presidencies, rekindled their friendship through a series of letters that touched on a wide range of topics, from philosophy to politics to personal matters. The Adams-Jefferson correspondence is a remarkable exchange of ideas between two founding fathers, and it continued until both men's deaths on July 4, 1826, exactly 50 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Their deaths on the same day, the nation's 50th birthday, became a poignant symbol of the American experiment in democracy. Conclusion John Adams, the second president of the United States, left an enduring legacy as a founding father, diplomat, statesman, and patriot. His contributions to American independence, the drafting of the U.S. Constitution, and the peaceful transfer of power set important precedents for the nation's future. Adams' unwavering commitment to principles of justice, honor, and the rule of law continue to inspire Americans today as they reflect on the remarkable life and career of this extraordinary statesman.